Welcome to the Gray Area, right here on 105.3 The Fan. Kevin Gray, you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Kevin Gray Sports, and be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, also at Kevin Gray Sports. And don't forget to, to, to hit the subscribe button right here for 105 through the fan on YouTube. You can catch me on the weekends with my partner, the two-time, two-time Hall of Famer, Chris Arnold, on 105 through the fan, radio.com and the radio.com app. The Dallas Cowboys seem to be zeroing in on new defensive coordinator, potentially Dan Quinn, formerly of the Atlanta Falcons as their head coach. Folks also remember Dan Quinn used to be the defensive coordinator for the Legion of Boom defenses for the Seattle Seahawks when they were making Super Bowl appearances back in 2013 and 2014. And of course, I know Dan Quinn had the likes of Richard Sherman, Earl Thomas, Cam Chancellor, Bobby Wagner, and others, all pros on that particular defense that made them one of the best defenses and scoring defense in the entire National Football League. And that was partly and mainly the reason why he was able to score the job with the Atlanta Falcons. Of course, took the Atlanta Falcons to the Super Bowl where they famously blew a 28-3 lead to Tom Brady and the New England Patriots. And things seemingly have not recovered since that devastating Super Bowl loss. But nonetheless, Dan Quinn seems to be a very good defensive mind with the idea of potentially running the 4-3 scheme, which the Dallas Cowboys used to run before your man Mike Nolan got here. And of course, Mike Nolan was unceremoniously fired by the Dallas Cowboys along with Jim Tom Sula after this team gave up a franchise record 473 points and was 31st in the National Football League in terms of their run defense. And Jane Slater threw out the bombshell report earlier in this season that Dallas Cowboys defensive players felt like they were not getting the kind of coaching and that their coaches did not know what they were doing in implementing this new defense that caused a lot of issues about how the Cowboys were playing week over week with respect to their inability to create turnovers, giving up big plays, especially in the run game where they were gashed against teams like the Washington football team, the Arizona Cardinals, the Cleveland Browns, the Baltimore Ravens, and other teams where they were incompetent all over the defense. The defensive line was porous all year, especially after suffering injuries to guys like Gerald McCoy, Tristan Hill, and others. You did see flashes from Navelle Gallimore, the Oklahoma pick, and he was able to play well as the season went on. But the linebacking core still remains a major question with respect to Jalen Smith and whether or not he will even be back on this football team. Leighton Vander Esch dealing with ankle injuries and a broken collarbone that caused him to miss time. And then the secondary is in flux with guys like Cheeto Awuzie, Xavier Woods, Jordan Lewis, all on their final year, their rookie deals. Those are all done now, and the Cowboys having to make some serious decisions on who they replace in that secondary. Guys like Donovan Wilson and Trevon Diggs have earned themselves starting spots going into 2021, especially Donovan Wilson with his instincts, his ability to thump in that secondary and making plays on the football. Trevon Diggs led the team with three interceptions on the season and showed promise as a second-round pick out of Alabama that he's going to be part of the long-term future for this Dallas Cowboy football team. But regardless of who the Dallas Cowboys bring in as far as their defensive coordinator is concerned, he is going to have to learn how to get the most out of a defense that was porous all season long. One of the main hallmarks of Mike Nolan and his reasoning for getting fired was that he was not able to not only get the most out of his players, he tried to implement a new scheme in the middle of a pandemic for a team that had a certain skill set that Mike Nolan's defense wasn't built to utilize for the players that he had. And Ultimately, that was his doomed and his failure. The inability to put Randy Gregory on the football field more and more consistently early on in the season, especially what you saw from him later on in the year, led to frustration from Jerry Jones and him going on 105 through the fan and saying that he regretted how the defense was handled. He would have liked to have seen it handled the way that the offense was handled with Mike McCarthy and Kellen Moore, keeping that kind of continuity with not only the players that they had, but the offensive scheme that they were running. That did not happen on the defensive side of the football, and you saw how porous this defense was all season long, which leads me to Dan Quinn. Yes, Dan Quinn had all pros and guys like Earl Thomas, Cam Chancellor, Bobby Wagner, any number of guys you want to name who are on those Legion of Boom defenses. And you're going to need that kind of talent to run the schemes that the Dallas Cowboys are expecting to run, especially if they go back to a 4-3. I'm not saying that they're going to get all a bunch of whole all-pro players They're going to need guys that are competent enough to run whatever defense is implemented by Dan Quinn if he is, in fact, 
the defensive coordinator. Throughout this search for the Dallas Cowboys, head coach Mike McCarthy seemed like he kept interviewing his boys, whether it was Joe Witt Jr. or Jason Simmons, both whom worked with Mike McCarthy when he was in Green Bay. The mere idea that Mike McCarthy, after hiring Mike Nolan and where it failed, decide, hey, let me go hire and look at some of my other boys that I used to work with to see if they might be good fits for the job, flies in the face of the common sense that Dallas Cowboys fans are looking for with respect to a new hire, a defensive coordinator. Mike McCarthy can't be trusted necessarily to make the final decision, even though it appears he's been given license to do so, according to our very own Mike Fisher. If that's the case, even though Jerry and Stephen Jones may be sitting in on these meetings, they are leaving the decision up to Mike McCarthy and his ability to make a better decision than he did the first time with Mike Nolan. And that's kind of a scary proposition given what just happened for this defense this year. We said, Kevin, weren't you the one that wanted Mike McCarthy as the head coach of this football team? Yeah, I was the one based on what Jerry Jones had told us about what he was looking for from a head coach as far as the Dallas Cowboys were concerned. And Mike McCarthy just happened to fit the profile. It doesn't mean he didn't deal with unprecedented injuries, a pandemic, and some of the adversity that this Cowboys team dealt with as a reason to give him an ultimate pass, which I'm going to give him, given what happened this year. But his failed hiring with Mike McCarthy or for Mike Nolan is inexcusable, given what Mike Nolan was prior to his final stop with the Dallas Cowboys as defensive coordinator. Yeah, he was a former head coach. Yes, he was a former defensive coordinator, but he was with the Baltimore Ravens that had a Hall of Fame safety in one Ed Reed. There ain't no Hall of Famers running around on this Dallas Cowboys defense, and to try and implement a new defense, a hybrid at that, in the middle of a pandemic, just a bad idea. So now, if Dan Quinn is in fact named the defensive coordinator where he seems to be the favorite according to multiple reports, he will have the benefit of a full offseason season. His ability to be a great teacher, which we've heard our very own Brian Brada talk about, the ability for him to be a teacher. And you've seen quotes from former Falcons players about the experiences that they've had with Dan Quinn being in their room as their head coach and being able to lead, communicate, and teach as far as that is concerned. And if that is the case, then the Dallas Cowboys may be hitting a home run in terms of this hire with Dan Quinn. But regardless of who they bring in, that person is going to have to get the most out of the talent that's currently on this roster. And if they do make personnel changes, Jalen Smith or others, they're going to have to ensure that the talent that they bring in matches the skill sets of the defense of the scheme that they're actually looking to run. If that's the case, you could see a defensive turnaround for this football team. I'm not saying it's going to be Wade Phillips-like like he likes to do in terms of his defensive turnarounds in over years. But Dan Quinn has the chance to be able to make an impact right away, especially if the Cowboys give him the latitude to be the kind of teacher that we've heard and the reputation that he's developed as a defensive coordinator and still a very good defensive mind, even if he isn't the kind of head coach that you're looking for. We will see if the Dallas Cowboys make the right decision. Regardless of that decision, whomever leads this defense is going to have to ensure that the communication lines are open and, more importantly, establishing trust with the players that he's going to be coaching. Otherwise, we could be looking for another defensive coordinator and a failed defense again at the end of the 2021 season. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Kevin Gray Sports. Be sure to subscribe to the 105.3 The Fan YouTube channel. We'll talk to you later. Peace.